Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we want to take a look together at a base and decide which attack we're going to do and I will show you guys exactly on how I approach the base, why do I do whatever strategy I will go do, uh, I'm about to do and this is kind of the, the idea of this video. So let's check it out, let's see what base we're going to attack because we're right now in the community clan and we're going to show the life attack obviously of that one as well and it's a pretty important war so we should triple if it's all going well before we're jumping right into the attack one quick reminder if you guys would like to support any content creator out there make sure that you're using the creator code in clash of clans or any supercell games remember it's working for all of the supercell games and if you want to support us, make sure that you're using our code. For me, it's code ITSU. Thank you so much for that. And let's get started with the planning because this is our opponent, Killer Bunnies. And so far, they're right now number one in our group. And we lost to a different team, which actually lost later. So it's a kind of really close group still. And if we can somehow win this match, it would be huge. Obviously, I do not want to burn too many bases. This is why I would show only this base. Um, and well i hope the guys can react fast enough so like they're changing up the bases whatever and well let's check it out this is the base which we're about to attack and i will show you guys exactly on how i approach those bases what is like my th thought process in behind and whenever i take a look at the base obviously I have, like, I have like a personal ranking of different strategies and right now in the current meta it's all about the attacker messing up not the base builder being good obviously that's a nice thing as well but the attacker has everything in his hands because attacking is so powerful right now. So as long as we plan well, we should get the triple as long as we execute well as well. And that's kind of all which matters. And like I said, my personal preference right now, and that's like from person to person different because there are many viable strategies right now. For example, like Zap Lalo, Yeti Smash, um, any Zap combination with like Queen Judge, hybrid, um, I don't know, like mass hog, whatever. There's so many possibilities out there. But the first things which um, I saw on this base is once again, based on my personal preference, is this three set of out of the buildings, which means like the two expos and the scatter shot. And the next thing for me is as soon as I see something like that is obviously try to abuse this because this is normally a weakness that you can zap two expos and a scatter that's quite a bit of value so how can we use that the next step which we have to somehow figure out is what do we do after that like do it do we do a queen charge do we do mass i don't know like a mass hawk rider attack uh lalo attack what is our next step and the problem right now is the clan castle because we can't zap the clan castle if we're going for those three buildings over there like the two expos and the scatter. So we have to do something which can deal with the clan castle. So for example like a zap yeti or like lightning yeti smash or like a I don't know lightning queen charge hybrid something like that. Because those attack strategies can deal with the clan castle and that's kind of the idea. So the question right now is, do we start the queen shot in front of the town hall and like charge away? Or do we start from somewhere else and charge into the direction of the town hall? Those are like the two main options which you normally have. Because you either want to go into the town hall early or you want to take out the town hall with your queen. So in my opinion, I think this might be the best option. Like charging into the town hall with like zapping the bottom expos and the scatter and then doing something on the back end from the three o'clock side either like hybrid um i don't know like something obviously we need to fun like which means we need to push our queen into the right direction and this means we need to interrupt this kind of ring setup of this base because there's like this center which is the multi inferno tower and we need to somehow interrupt the ring round about it so we want to get this inferno tower out of the way with the yeti blimp and if we can get there, we have a really nice setup for the funnel because then our queen will just step to the left and everything should go smooth. So this is kind of the setup of the queen shot, right? Like this is the queen charge. Obviously at six o'clock there, there's the enemy king, enemy queen. So we need headhunters and everything. But so far the queen charge is looking really good. There is not too much damage because, well, the expos and the scatter is gone. So we should get something like this with our queen charge, which is already quite a bit. But still... What is the follow-up? Like, what do we do after that? 
And this is the next thing which we have to think about is what resources do we need in our queen charge? And I think for taking out just like this, we need the queen, maybe some sort of funnel and obviously the Yeti blimp. So what we could do is just do a hybrid and then do the king at the top side and just overpower the base. I think this could work, but this multi inferno tower is messing up the uh, the damage a little bit because, well, on the back end we have the scatter on the two expos. So we need to come with, with something different, I think. So there's the headhunter at the top side, there's the two air defenses, which means why don't we just go for Lalo? Because the headhunter is on the outside, which means we can pretty easily take that out. And then we can yeah, like use our king on the left side to force our queen in and then play the Lalo, as we just said with the hybrid. That's already looking way better because we have the two expos and like um on ground at the back end we have only the multi and the scatter being an actual threat to our loons and if we can just freeze those or like use the warden ability that's looking pretty good and i think this was already enough of talking but i just wanted to highlight to you guys how i approach bases like this and i think since the war is pretty important we should just like use the power and the hero potion because otherwise we do not have max troops or like at least not all of them and non max heroes, but I think those would be pretty helpful on this attack. So we have over three headhunters, one for the queen, one for the king, one for the head uh, for the um, royal champ, and then like the five lightning, the earthquake for the two expos and scatter, and then just the lalo. So the plan is pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, we need to use the warden ability early because blocking the damage for the multi inferno tower, but except that the plan should be set in stone from this point on. So Let's figure out if we have everything and then we can get started and do the attack actually. So we have the base set up um, and everything is looking good army wise. We should have everything. So we're starting off with the Zabs, then the Yeti Blim right in behind and then our queen to kill the enemy clan castle. So Earthquake in the core, now the two Koku Loons. We have only 16 Loons left, which isn't too much to be honest, but I mean, the base isn't like having that much power left after we took already out that many things and the blimp is actually barely making it like this was this was close but i think the top uh, the uh, the inferno tower would have went down either way now we can start with our queen we need to make sure that we're dropping the queen that we can place the healers out of range and well one kokoloon the healers in behind so far so good now we drop the poison obviously onto the enemy skeletons but now something is happening which is really unfortunate. This freaking loon which I used as a Koku loon is tanking the witches and this means they're not running into the poison right away. And this is causing, causing huge issues because the poison is running out. We have two witches against us. So what I'm doing over here, I'm using the minion to help my queen using the freeze to somehow make sure that we can come back on this one. And guys, this is already quite unfortunate because we have already invested a freeze which was not planned and we have only 1 minute 50 seconds left and the queen is taking a long time to get through all of that. We have not, like, we do not want to use the rage just yet, which means it takes even longer to take out the enemy king and all of the buildings at the bottom side. It's 1 minute and 35 and now it's the, now it's kind of like trying to work against the clock because... Oh my god, only 1 minute 30, okay, we need to start with the Lalo really soon, I have to use the King ability, use the Warbreaker, so we can concentrate on the Lalo, 1 minute 20 left. So, now let's get started with the Lalo, I guess, the Lalo in behind, Warden in behind, so far so good, next Hound should be soon, I'm using the Rage, just to make sure that my Queen is actually staying alive, next Lava Hound, next group of Loons in behind, Royal Champion and Headhunter at the top side, now a couple of more Loons at the top side in as well, to push everything in. And now clean up troops because, well, we're short on time. So let's deploy all of those cleanup thingies. And, well, now the loons are all of them are pushing uh, like around the multi inferno which wasn't really as intended. And now we use the Royal Champ ability to make sure that my um, troops are actually going for the multi inferno tower in the core. We have the one freeze left for the scatter. My queen is surviving with the auto ability, thank goodness. And this still could be a triple. Even though we started with the Lalo like at 1 minute and 10, and this is the next reason why we went for Lalo, because Lalo is so much more quicker than, for example, Hybrid. Like, Lalo is super quick. It's crazy. So, even though we started at 1 minute 10, we still have around about 20 seconds left in this attack. So, the Lalo part took, like, 50 seconds, which is 
pretty fast. So yeah, I think this attack was pretty, pretty sick in my opinion, pretty insane. Um, and this means we're still perfect over here. This means uh, in five wars we are we got 15 stars, so pretty good setup for us. We are leading right now in triples against killer bunnies. Like I said, this match is really, really important because, well, the group so far is really close. But I want to show you guys one more attack because I'm just in love right now with the with the Lalo and with the Zap spells because they're so crazy. And I see always those those comments like it's uh, from, on my basis that Zaps are not working or like I can't really use the Zap spells because the bases are like not really set up for that. You just need to learn to like see the entries kind of because if you're not at the highest level of competition, most of the bases are able to get zapped because that's just how the zap spell works. If you want to have like a brief summary of how the zap spell work and like what exactly is the range and radius and everything, make sure that you're watching the video of yesterday. Um, but the zap is just right now the strongest spell in Clash of Clans. That's straight up how it is. And well, on this base, everything is looking perfect so far. You guys already saw the result because I just want to show you guys the replay because I want to highlight a couple of things. You need to be really creative with your heroes sometimes. I think the hero part is actually the most important thing on a Zap Lalo. Obviously, you shouldn't screw up the Lalo too bad, but I feel like if your hero part is already good enough, this already is killing the base most of the time. So, so far we're like at 34% of the base. My queen is still alive and still having her ability, which is really nice. And always remember, if you have the pleasure of having a max queen, always remember a max queen can one versus one a max turn of 13 building. That's pretty important because this means I was able to save my queen ability. And this means I killed already the royal champion, which was kind of on the back and would be annoying to deal with. But still, now the Lalo is coming in. And to be honest, my Lalo isn't the cleanest or anything. Like it's not, I'm really a god at Lalo or anything. It's just this strategy is so crazy powerful. I'm using the slammer to tank the scatter shot because the scatter shot is pretty annoying otherwise. And well, then just the Lalo into the base, the next lava on for the bottom side, a couple of cleanup troops. As soon as the ground expo is going down, I can use my headhunter as well. Um, but well, I have the warden ability in combination with the um, dragon already at the enemy queen. Now I'm using the headhunter where I think the the um, expo is going to go down and it's actually going down so yeah crazy overkill on this one and it just shows how strong those freaking zaps are like Z uh, lalo in general once again which is pretty nice because well we had a, a, a hybrid meta for really long so yeah this was the next uh, attack which i wanted to show you guys and this was the last attack for this video as well because we have well we have the swag freeze over here even though I have to say, I liked the first attack like with the Zap Queen Charge Lalo way better. It was an insane attack in my opinion. Like one of my coolest attacks which I've done in, a, in quite some time. Um, but yeah, so this was this war. And let's check out the groups which I just mentioned. So it's freaking close this group. It's crazy. So, so far we are leading. Um, I think like we have two triples out of four attacks. Yes. And they have only one triple out of eight. So it's looking good for us. But still... The group right now is super close. Killer Bunnies are at number one, but the second team actually lost already. Or like the team which we lost against lost already to another team like the uh, Don't Take Krieger. And they lost to a team which we won against. So the group is super close if we can get the win against Killer Bunnies because this still means we could get number one. So everything is open. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned some more about approaching a base and how to plan on that. And well, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow. And until then, until then see you guys and bye bye.